He was, he was shy to start off with. I mean, he's been through a lot. He had such a genuine smile, and he just, like, he, he, wanted, he wanted more in life. She wasn't looking for trouble. She never was the type of person that wanted trouble. At her funeral, I made a promise to Medina that I would see to it that her son is well taken care of. You can't take the world in, but you can take some of it. And Medina was part of my world for quite a long time. In this video, we'll dive into two deeply tragic cases involving the Knowles family from Schenectady, New York. First, we'll discuss the recent and devastating loss of 15-year-old Dubar Knowles, and then we'll revisit the heartbreaking fatality of his older sister, Medina Knowles, which took place in 2016. These two incidents, though separated by time, are bound by the overwhelming grief and devastation experienced by one family and their community. On the night of October 14th, 2024, Schenectady police responded to multiple reports of discharges at a house party on Congress Street. It was supposed to be a lively Sweet 16 and pre-Halloween celebration. However, that night ended in tragedy. When officers arrived, they found party goers, many of them teens, fleeing in every direction. In the backyard of 1122 Congress Street, police discovered 15-year-old Dubar Tyreek Knowles who had been wounded in the torso. His injuries were severe and despite emergency care, Dubar tragically passed away early the next morning at the hospital. That same night, investigators found a second victim, a 13-year-old girl a few blocks away on Chrysler Avenue. She had been wounded in the head and neck, but survived after undergoing surgery. As of this video, she is in stable condition, but the trauma of that night will remain with her forever. We're just asking for the public's assistance. This is one where we're really going to need the public's help on. Um, again, we had lots of individuals that were in the area, but there are quite a few people that were fleeing the area as well when we got there. Police are still working to determine what led to the vial. As of this video, there are no suspects in custody and they are actively asking for any information, including surveillance footage from nearby homes. Neighbors on Congress Street have described the area as rowdy, often attracting police activity. Nevertheless, even in a neighborhood accustomed to noise and disturbances, nothing could have prepared them for the events of that night. Investigators believe that Dubar and the girl, students at Schenectady High School and Oneida Middle School respectively, were attending the party when discharges erupted. It remains unclear if they were the intended targets or caught in crossfire. Police have not yet established a motive and they are still unsure how many discharges were fired that night. The scene on Congress Street remained tense even after the incident. On the rainy morning which followed, officers maintained a presence with crime scene tapes surrounding the area. Outside the residence, neglected mail overflowed from the mailbox and a spare tire sat propped against the porch, adding an eerie stillness to the site of the crime. How do we help families to guide their children, how do we come together? It takes a village to raise children, as, as we often hear. So how do we prevent this from happening where, you know, a group of children can be together, one is killed from gunfire, and another one severely injured 
That's that's not only a, the family issue, that is a community issue. How does that happen? So we have to look, again, we have to look at the root causes and then evaluate our values as, as people. Dubar, a ninth grader at Schenectady High, was remembered fondly by his coaches. Some called him by his middle name, Tyreek. He was a shy boy, but those who knew him described his kind smile and his passion for sports. He played both basketball and football and had dreams of using athletics to create a better future for himself. They spoke about his potential and how sports had given him structure, discipline, and a sense of purpose, tools he used to rise above his challenging upbringing. Dubar, he was, he was a um, pretty outgoing kid. Once she, once she got to open up, he was, he was shy to start off with. I mean, he's been through a lot in his life, um, his home life and stuff like that. So he used sports as an outlet. He had such a genuine smile, and he just like he he wanted he wanted more in life, you know. And it's just sad that we, you know, that he didn't have that opportunity, you know, because again, he was a great kid, and I, I just cannot get it out of my head how, how much of a great kid he was. Monday had already been a school holiday due to Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day, but Schenectady High School made arrangements for social workers and counselors to be available when students returned on Tuesday. The school also increased its security presence, working closely with local police to ensure a safe environment for students in the days following the incident. Let's come together. Let's brainstorm and let's find ways in which to really re-engage some of our youth, um, as well as our families, um, to support them. So we want to kind of get to the, to the root cause of the choices and decisions that all of our children might be making, whether it's in building or, or community, and, and kind of start to remove those concerns to the best of our ability. What makes Dunbar's passing even more heart-wrenching is that this is not the first time his family has been touched by firearm violence. Eight years earlier, his sister Medina also lost her life, wounded just a mile from where Dubar lost his. Medina Knowles was just 17 years old when her life was taken on the night of September 15, 2016. She was in her family's second floor apartment on Schenectady Street when her then boyfriend, Raekwon Stover, wounded her in the head, ending her instantly. Medina, a young mother, left behind her then two-year-old son, Jasai, who would now grow up without his mother. The incident occurred around 11.30 p.m. and neighbors reported hearing two discharge sounds followed by Medina's mother's desperate screams. They ended my baby. Medina was pronounced gone at the scene and police quickly launched an investigation. Neighbors spoke of the frequent fire in the area with one neighbor, Jesus, sharing that he didn't feel safe raising his children in that environment. Another neighbor, Anais, expressed her desire to move, saying that it was not a good environment for children to grow up in. Officers arrived on scene, found the deceased uh, inside the apartment with what appears to be a gunshot wound to the head. Uh, she was pronounced at the scene. She wasn't looking for trouble. She never was the type of person that wanted trouble. She didn't. Quiet and caring. All she wanted was more for her son. She was trying to do better for him. She was going through trouble with the baby father, but all she wanted to do was do right for that baby. And for somebody to take her life, for what? It's really sad. I don't feel safe. They left the Medina child. Medina had been a student at Schenectady High School, just like her younger brother, Dubar, and was working hard to finish school while caring for her son. She was also involved in local programs like XQuest, which provided free resources and support for at-risk youth. Judy Atkinson, the founder of XQuest, recalled how Medina had participated in ballet classes and other activities, describing her as a kind, loving person who strived to live a positive life despite her challenges. 
very, very kind and loving person. Judy Atchison dedicates her life to helping youth. I hadn't seen her since she was pregnant. She used to come and bring her younger brothers and two sisters. We do, everything we do is free, so we are a perfect place for street kids to come. When I saw her Facebook page, it said, Empower, forget the hate, word to love. It made me feel that maybe we had some influence on her life. You can't take the world in, but you can take some of it. And Medina was part of my world for Medina's quite a long time. Medina's life a dark turn after she began dating Raekwon Stover. According to court records, Stover had been controlling and abusive. He even forced her into prostitution, a situation Medina had been trying to escape. She wanted to find legitimate work, but her attempts to distance herself from Stover led to the fatal confrontation that night. In her final hours, Medina had posted on Facebook about the conflicts in her life, including a post that read, Don't waste your time on revenge. Those who hurt you will face their own karma. That post, shared hours before her passing, now serves as a chilling reminder of the tensions building in her life before it was cut short. Stover was arrested a few days later and charged with second degree fatality, weapons possession, and tampering with evidence. Prosecutors presented a strong case showing that Stover had become enraged as Medina tried to leave his control. During the trial, Evidence was presented that showed that Stover viewed Medina as his property, even going as far as to sell her online. The court also heard heartbreaking testimony from a neighbor who recounted Medina's final words. She cried out for her mother just before the discharge rang out. This was not a crime of passion or a sudden loss of control, prosecutors argued but it was the culmination of deliberate and calculated acts. Assistant District Attorney Christina Tremonte Pelham explained that Stover had discovered Medina missed a pre-arranged meeting with a court client earlier that day. After arguing with her, he left to get discharges and later returned to wound her in cold blood. Family members recounted how Medina had pleaded with Stover to leave that life behind. However, as Medina tried to take control of her life and do better for her son, Stover met her demands with ending her life, as her mother put it. Knowles was the mother of a two-year-old. Her family says she was excited to be going back to classes at Schenectady High School which was supposed to happen the day after she was shot. But rather than going line by line. Now in court this morning, Stover's defense attorney questioned the detective's findings during the investigation. But the district attorney's office says it's confident in its case and it is satisfied. On June 15, 2017, a jury found Stover guilty of firing a discharge into Medina's head after just one hour of deliberation. Stover was sentenced to 25 years to life in state prison for the second degree fatality of the 17 year old. He also received an additional sentence of one and one thirds to four years for tampering with evidence. After ending Medina, Stover had deleted incriminating emails and disposed of the fatality weapon, which prosecutors noted is still out on the street. Medina's family spoke out in court during Stover's sentencing. Her mother, Taisha Murray, described the horror of finding her daughter ended. In an emotional moment, Murray had to be restrained by court officers as Stover was led out of the courtroom. She called his actions evil, predatory, and sadistic, asking the court to impose the maximum sentence. The judge agreed eventually sentencing Stover to 26 years to life. Stover cried in court as Noel's mother delivered an emotional victim impact statement. I am extremely bothered by the fact that her <coughs> was obviously unconcerned that her child, me and three of her siblings were actually home when he came. At her funeral, I made a promise to Medina that I would see to it that her son is well taken care of. And he knows 
the amazingly beautiful but even after receiving the maximum out. sentence stover's punishment did not end there in december 2017 he was convicted of assaulting another inmate in schenectady county jail an attack that left the victim with facial fractures for this he received an additional five-year sentence to run consecutively with his existing sentence, reinforcing the idea that his vile tendencies had not changed. Medina, described by her family as selfless and kind, was the second oldest of five children. Her younger siblings were deeply affected by her passing. missing so much school that they had to attend summer classes just to catch up. The emotional toll was severe. Maury shared that she could not bring herself to return to the apartment where her daughter had lost her life. Unable to face the memories of that night, the family lost their home and many of their possessions. Maury was later diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, haunted by the vivid recollections of that night. The loss of Medina left her family devastated, especially her young son, Josai. Medina's uncle, Marcus Goodman, spoke at her funeral about how Josai had run around searching for his mother, not understanding that she was gone forever. In the wake of her passing, a GoFundMe page was created to help cover funeral expenses and raise money for Josai's care. The community came together raising $1,156 in support of the family. The passings of both Dubar and Medina Knowles are tragic on their own, but together they represent an unfathomable loss for one family. Their mother has now lost two children to senseless firearm bio, both within a mile of each other and in the span of eight years. The pain she carries is indescribable. Medina's passing was a result of domestic bio, while Dubar's fatality remains unsolved. Police are still searching for leads and have asked the public for help, even going as far as offering an anonymous tip line for anyone who might know something about Dubar's final moments. May the family and friends of Medina and Dubar Knowles find solace in the happy memories and may their souls rest in perpetual peace. Thank you.